Hey everybody, Kelly Engineering here, and welcome to episode 11 of Stage Learning. In between episodes, I didn't really do much. I made a couple of quality of life items like this fluid trash can. So the fluid trash can is just like it, just like it sounds. It's going to void any fluid that goes into it. And right now I have the heavy oil because this tinker tank is completely full. Uh, so yeah, it's voiding all of the heavy oil I make. And eventually, once LPG gets full, it's going to do the same thing to the LPG. Uh, light oil remains the same. I've also been messing around with heat sinks for magnetic craft because I almost had my uh, solar tower melt down and the heat sink is doing its job a little too well. I made 32 of them thinking that I would need all 32 of them and boy was I wrong. So the heat that's being generated right now is still rising thankfully but if I install one more heat sink on here then it is going to lower the heat too much probably to around 600 fahrenheit which isn't enough to activate my uh my steam generators so yeah i need quite a bit of heat being produced but i can't install another heat sink without it going too low and only having one installed the heat is still continuing to rise and then once it's nighttime it lowers itself to abysmal rates so yeah it lowers itself down to dang near zero so that i'm uh yeah, the heat sinks aren't working the way that I thought they would, and it is kind of frustrating. But I also spent the majority of my time growing hemp, because I have the sailcloths on every single one of my windmills now. And that was quite a bit of hemp. It was taking way too long. So I went back home, or I guess home is a weird word. But this home right here, my old home, because in my old home... I have a slime chunk and this chunk right here is a slime chunk so I had slime spawning and I killed the slimes got slime pearls and made this right here which is a lily pad of fertility it took quite a bit are you serious right now <laughs> but yeah the lily pad of fertility is uh, increasing the rate that my crops grow just phenomenally so it took quite a bit of slime pearls in order to get and i had all of the other materials that i needed but yeah slime pearls are really the bottleneck for that and yeah you can see that uh, all of that stuff is growing just as quick as i cut it down so yeah the lily pad of fertility is definitely doing its job fantastically but in this episode what we're going to do is we're going to uh start on tech reborn i'm going to wait to get into the crusher industrial squeezer and refinery here and I noticed something weird about the refinery anyway, and that is the fact that the projectors for immersive engineering are not here. So, yeah, I don't know how I'm supposed to build the proper machine if I can't make the blueprint necessary in order to uh, make it work. Normally what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to take your... Engineers, uh, your engineer's handbook and combine it with the projector when the book has uh, the machine you want to build displayed in the page and it will project what you need to do in order to build it. That is not a thing in here and looking over all of the quests, it's not something that gets unlocked either. So I don't know whether or not I was supposed to build all of these machines from memory because I most certainly cannot do that. So yeah, until I figure that out, what we're going to do is we're going to get into Tech Reborn. So the first thing I have to create in Tech Reborn is most definitely some bronze, because I need the wrench for Tech Reborn in order to pick up pretty much anything inside the mod. So I've made some bronze blend, and that was pretty easy to make. It's just uh, three copper and tin. I did not have as much tin dust as I thought I would from all of the uh, pulverizing I've been doing. So, yeah, that was kind of unfortunate, but now that we have these bronze ingots, what we're going to do is let's find the recipe for it. Where is that wrench? Here we go. So we need four ingots and three nuggets. That is ugh, super simple to make. All right. So one, two, three, four. And one, two, three. So now that we have the Tech Reborn wrench, we're going to immediately combine it with our morphing tool. And we're going to head over here because I have made the first 
four machines that I need to make for this quest pack. And it is the generator, the electric furnace, the grinder, and the extractor. Now I need to make a lot more of these machines if I'm going to be automating anything inside Tech Reborn, but at the very least I can go over the basics. So I have this insulated copper cable right here, and if I try to break the insulated copper cable with a regular pickaxe, you'll see instead I got a regular copper cable back, and I would need to turn that into an insulated copper cable again. But luckily with the wrench from Tech Reborn, I just got that cable immediately back by shift right clicking. So I don't have to worry about that. Also another thing with the uh, say electric furnace, if I try to break it with this pickaxe, then it's not going to work properly. I will completely lose the machine. However, with the morphing tool or my tech reborn wrench, I get it back exactly as it was supposed to be. However, I do lose all of the power that was stored inside of it. And then we have the generator, which is uh, not very fuel efficient. So I won't be using the generator very much. Instead, I'm going to be relying on my magnetic craft and immersive engineering power because I can connect. Oh, I was running a little test earlier, but here we go. Wire attached and you can see that power went immediately into my electric furnace. So I don't have to worry about that anymore and I don't have to worry about wasting my coal or charcoal to keep this generator powered, especially since my wind power is always running at all times. So yeah, for now, before we get everything basically automated, this is what we're going to use for our power. And then moving on to the grinder, the grinder is, um, let's see here, looking at the, recipes for it it's pretty standard stuff because uh yeah like one piece of lapis is going to get me or well, one lapis ore is going to get me 10 lapis meanwhile if i put it in the regular grinder i'm going to get six lapis so this is absolutely an upgrade from the magnetic craft grinder i've been using however there are some things that are different so like yeah emerald ore inside the grinder i'm going to get two so no difference there And it's going to immediately just give me the two dust for anything that I throw in here. So normally with the magnetic craft way, I'd be throwing gold in and then crushing it up and getting the chunks. And then the chunk goes into a sieve and then one chunk equals two ingots. I'm going to be eliminating one step out of here by turning the grinder immediately into the two dust. And then I can throw it into a furnace to get me the two ingots. So... I guess it's not really removing a step, but it is certainly much less complicated. Um, I still need to keep these machines open because there are some things that can only go inside the magnetic craft grinders, and there are some things that can only go inside of the uh, Tech Reborn grinder. Also, looking over here at the crusher for uh, immersive engineering, there are things that can only go in the crusher, so I'm not going to be able to eliminate any of these machines. It's just going to be a massive factory that serves different purposes. Um, the most common one is actually going to be the coal. So, if I throw a block of coal coke into, no, that's the blast furnace. Here we go, the crusher. So, in the immersive engineering crusher, the only thing that I can... Uh, get coal dust from is from this crusher so this coal dust is going to go into an industrial squeezer it's going to give me the hop graphite and even though it doesn't show up here this is for the hop graphite and that is going to be one of the quest rewards i need to complete this research so yeah i need to have that crusher this grinder and the magnetic craft grinder all up at the same time in order to progress in this pack and that's unfortunate I just realized I forgot to go over what the extractor does. So normally in order to get this rubber, I have to go through the process of making tree taps and going over to these Tech Reborn rubber trees. And then using the tree taps, you right click here, get the sap, throw the sap or yeah. Oh, I have no sap in my inventory. But yeah, if you get the sap and throw it into a furnace, it will give you these rubber balls. However, whenever you're using the extractor, you can completely skip out that. Here we go, extractor. I can throw in one rubber sapling, get one rubber, a rubber wood, one rubber. 
However, the sap, instead of making one sap inside of a furnace equal one rubber, I can instead get three rubber from one sap. Or if I have a lot of rubber tree logs, as I do have a lot of rubber tree logs because of all of the... Uh, th these trees grow a little weird. Sometimes they'll only be like two logs exposed, and that's not very good for rubber production. So I chopped down quite a bit of trees in order to make sure that I had the proper height to manually harvest all of this rubber. So now that I have the extractor, I can just chop down all of these trees, throw that tree... Th throw all of those logs into the extractor, and I won't really have to worry about rubber for very long. Really, it's only going to be used to make the insulated cables. And if I want to make the immersive engineering conveyor belts, instead of using leather, I can use the rubber in place of that as well. All right, and we are back at it. It has been about a month since I last logged onto this world because uh, I just recently moved. I am now in Virginia for work, and... Uh, I got a new apartment. I had none of my household goods. I set up a desk in my computer and tried to record, but there was a terrible echo in this room. So I had to buy some acoustic foam and now my household goods are here. So I'm like polluting the walls with a whole bunch of stuff trying to eliminate the echo. And I'm sorry if there is a uh, noticeable change in my audio quality. That will be fixed in the coming episodes as I buy more acoustic foam, place it on more walls, and just get myself overall more situated in my new location. Uh, this move was supposed to happen sometime in September, and here it is January, and hoo Navy. So, yeah, let's get back to the work that we were doing with Tech Reborn. I have torn down the three machines that I had over there, and I have set up two grinders, and I also have these forged multi-part uh, multi piping, and I was trying to figure out how exactly they work because... Um, there isn't a really good manual on how to do the Project Red transportation stuff. So there are a whole bunch of pipes that I am just playing around with, trying to get them to work the way that I want them to. You're just creating simple storage networks whenever you use the piping. If I get there, they are. Okay, so these pipes right here, I have to... Uh, I have the item transport pipes, but I also need the junction, the interface pipes, the request and transfer pipes. And I'm going to have to attach them all to the grinders. I was working in a creative world to try to figure that out and not having too much success. Uh, the conveyor belts, I, I could use conveyor belts, but they are a little, they're, they're a little wonky, especially the, especially the immersive engineering conveyor belts. Otherwise, I would have absolutely used those. Luckily, um, let's see here. Do I have a, where are the furnaces? There it is. So luckily I can place a furnace right here, open it up, and I can configure the side. So if I want the input to be on, here we go, auto input. So anytime that the grinder completes something, it will immediately push it to the electric furnace, and that's all well and good, but I still want something to make it look more factory-like, which is why I was stuck on using conveyor belts or the transport pipes. So I'm still trying to figure all of that out. And come to think of it, I have not checked to see what I need to work on. Oh, I am not going to be getting into this this episode. So I've decided that for the bulk of my transport system for Tech Reborn, I'm going to be using firewall pipes from Project Red Transportation. Uh, they're pretty easy to make, especially since magma creams I can get from a Tech Reborn grinder. No problem, magma blocks are everywhere. The problem is the routed junction pipe required to make them, because I'm going to need green Illamar, red Illamar, and infused silicon. Uh, the infused silicon is a uh, pretty lengthy crafting process. So, sandy coal compound is easy enough to make. I just made uh, eight of those, and I'm going to immediately throw them into a furnace. And while we're doing that, I need to make myself a, uh, a saw, because I'm going to take those silicon bulls that I'm making and turn them into the silicon wafers. Where are my diamonds? There we are. All right, so let's make this uh, saw real quick while the silicon is smelting up. Uh, the reason why I decided on the two of those is because in my creative world, they just, they seemed to be the, uh, the firewall pipes, at the least, seem to be the simplest way to get things to and from, and they have the most configuration options to make that work for me. So I have completely forgot how to make the Project Red saw. 
Here it is. All right, so we have the diamond saw right here. We can at least take one of the silicon bulls. Oh, wow, they smelted very quickly. All right, but we can take the silicon bulls and the diamond saw, make the silicon wafers, and with the silicon wafers, all I have to do is surround them with redstone to make the red silicon compound and smelt those again for the infused silicon. And here is our infused silicon, and I am making the nether bricks right now so that I can complete all of these recipes. But I have been to the nether, I got some glowstone dust, and I also got a bunch of cactus and beetroot in order to make the red and green dye. And I have those farms over here. Um, I had to transfer the lily pad of fertility over here just because the... The cactus was pretty slow going, but now that I have more than enough cactus, I removed it back over here so I could keep my beetroot going. I'm going to need a lot of those beetroot seeds, and uh, I'm going to continue needing the hemp seeds for later on once I get more into immersive engineering. But for now, I do have the dyes, so we can create the green Illamar, and we can create the red Illamar. Combine that over here. Um, what do we need? The junction pipe? There we go. All right, so that is the wrong item. All right, so we have our routed junction pipe. I'm going to make 64 of them to begin with, and we're going to immediately throw them into here. So I get 16 of the junction pipes, and I also get 16 of the standard transport pipes for this recipe, but I will only get one firewall pipe for my trouble. So, yeah, that is unfortunate. We're going to... There we go. All right, so we're going to make a couple of these to begin with, and I'm going to start messing around in real time with a bunch of the setups in order to get our grinders to work. Oh, yeah, and I've also been making the magma cream. Uh, I don't have a lot of magma blocks left. I need to go into the nether and... I thought I had more than this, and I was wrong. So I'm going to go into the nether, grab a lot more of the magma cream so I can continue making the firewall blocks, and... Wow, I just realized that's very clever. The firewall block is all nether stuff. Huh. Yeah, I'm going to go into the nether a little bit later, grab more magma blocks so we can continue we can continuously have our routed firewall pipes. So I just started going over what it's going to take in order to explain how the transport pipes work and uh I I think that's going to take a little too long and I'm already at like what 17 or 18 minutes for this episode. So we're going to hold off until next episode to go over all the transport pipes. In the meantime, though, what we're going to do is we're going to set up to make all of the, well, not all of the, but uh, we're going to set up to make some of the immersive engineering machines. In order to complete the quest, what it wants me to do is it wants me to make a crusher and a metal press. Um, there are a lot more machines I'm going to have to make. I mean, the fermenter and the squeezer is all well and good. We can make those a little bit later. But I do want that crusher and I do want that metal press. The metal press is going to make things a lot easier for me in order to, uh, let's see here. Oh, I don't have the holograms. That's, what? I'm getting deja vu. I think I already knew that there weren't any holograms, but, hmm. In any case, the metal press is just going to be a way that I can make all of the plates that I'm going to need to make. Uh, the Magnetic Craft one is all well and good, however, I have to manually choose what mode I want this to be in whenever I throw stuff in there. That's not the case with the Industrial Christian, the Immersive Engineering press. So that's why I want to make that. I also want to make the crusher just because I'm going to have to make it a little bit later anyway. I may as well just take care of it. So, as you saw, I am making... The redstone plates that I'm going to need, I'm also going to need some copper plates, some iron plates, and this should be enough redstone plates to at least get me started. So, let's take this glowstone out of here. And make the redstone engineering block. So, luckily, I get two of them for this recipe, so, uh, yeah, I'm very happy with that. And we're also going to need the steel scaffolding, which is easy enough. So, the steel rods, you'll see that... Two steel ingots will make me four steel rods. In the metal press, one is going to make me two. So it's not really, I'm not really gaining or losing anything by throwing it through the metal press. But we do need these steel rods. So here we go. All right, steel rods. And with those steel rods, we can make steel scaffolding. 
There we go. That part should be complete. Um, now we need to make the light engineering blocks. Oh, the hoppers. Oh, that's a great point. So these hoppers right here, this is what I'm using in order to feed these Magneticraft electric furnaces, but I can't stand this setup. Uh, I just didn't have access to any sort of transport pipes when I did set it up. Now that I am going to be using the transport pipes, I think I can finagle something in order to make that work. So we're going to remove these hoppers and we're going to use these in our immersive engineering machines instead. And I think that'll work out just fine. Here we go. And in between episodes, I'll uh, use the transport pipes to make something a little bit better. But hoppers have been taken care of. Booyah. And then the steel fencing. Oh no, how, many, how much steel fencing do I need? Just eight? Well, that means I'm going to have to... Oh, I guess not. Okay. Easy. One, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. And the last thing we're going to need is the light engineering blocks. Oh no, I need to make iron mechanical components. So I am going to go ahead and make the engineer's workbench. Because you see that it's four iron plates and one copper ingot in order to make one iron mechanical component. However, in the engineer's workbench, it's just two iron plates and one copper ingot. So I'll be saving a lot of, uh, I'll be saving a lot of iron in the making of the iron mechanical components. All right, here we go. I am ready to make my, uh, my little workbench over here. So let's make that real quick, but it also requires the blueprints. So I'm going to make the blueprints as well. Crafting components, metal press mold and common projectiles. Um, I want to mess around with the common projectiles. I do not use the firearms and immersive engineering nearly as much as I should. So let's place this right here, put in the crafting components. And here we go. Iron mechanical component, put in the copper ingot and put in the iron plates. And I can make 32 of the iron mechanical components, which means I can make those light engineering blocks. Just going to need more iron plates and more copper plates of which I have. Oh, I'm going to have to make more iron plates. Ah, that's fine. We can make more of those just fine. So let's make the light engineering blocks. There we go. And those two quests. Oh, the engineer's workbench was a quest. Oh, and I get a choice reward. So I just made crafting metal and projectiles. Um, I am a ways away from the arc furnace. And I think there's... I think there's a village with the immersive engineering hut in there, so I can just buy that. Uh, the specialized projectiles, though, a little harder to come by, so we're going to go with specialized projectiles. And then, oh joy, more conveyor belts. Now the next thing we're going to need are pistons and heavy engineering blocks before we can close this out. Uh, I'm not, oh, I need to figure out before I do that, though, how I'm supposed to assemble these. Because... Normally there is an immersive engineering projector, but there is no projector in here. So what I'm supposed to do is I'm supposed to combine the projector with the immersive engineering manual, and it will display a hologram of how to assemble this properly. So I do not know why the projector is not here. I'm going to do a little bit more research on that. All right, so looking through the engineer's manual, uh, when you get to the multi-block constructs, this is where it explains how the projector works, but there are no pages for it. I'm going to have to check to make sure that it's not be it hasn't been disabled in the configs. Although, I don't know why it would have been. So, yeah, that's a, that's a bust, but uh, at the very least, we're set up for next episode, what with the Project Red Pipes and the immersive engineering machines. So I want to do one last thing in this episode. I want to make the revolver since I have never done that before. So I've already made some sticks. I'm going to need two of the revolver handles. Here we go. And uh, the rest of it is pretty easy, honestly. Got the revolver barrel, the revolver hammer, revolver drum. Oop, I'm going to need an iron mechanical component, but that's fine. I can spare one of them. So where are you? Here's the drum. And I think I have two iron ingots over here somewhere. Yes, I do. 
Awesome, we are ready to make the revolver. So, revolver, done. Uh, I'm also going to have to make some empty casings, which is easy enough. I'm going to make 15 of them. Here we go. And with these empty casings, I can go over to the engineer's workbench and make uh, gunpowder, lead. Here we go. So I'm going to make, oh, do I have to, am I limited? Oh, it uses all of the necessary materials. Hmm. That's fine. Uh, that's, uh, I just made the silver cartridges, which work best against the undead. So here we go. Let's open that up and put in a bullet. And go test this puppy out. Oh, wow. Down at the bottom, it shows what I have loaded in here. So luckily it's nighttime. It shouldn't take too long to find any undead. There we go. There's a zombo. Oh, that didn't. Oh, my aim is just terrible. Got it. Okay. So there is five of the bullets down. All right, takes two to take down a skeleton. And of course, it's not going to be as effective on the creeper. And I am out. All right, so the revolver is really just a last resort thing. It's not as... My sword is more powerful than it currently, so I don't really think I'm going to be using the revolver all that much. Later on, I will make the railgun, though. Because the railgun just looks super, super fun. So, yeah, with that, I'm ready to close out this episode. I am Kelly Engineering. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to muzzle you there. Uh, I am Kelly Engineering. I hope that you did enjoy this episode, and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye